Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. If you are looking for some interesting modern harmony and some outside scale choices, then probably Ben Munder is the place to go. And in this video, I'm going to take a look at his recording of the standard I Remember April of the Dust album. He's playing it as a trio with Jim Black on drums and Ben Street on bass. I'm going to take a look at a few phrases from the theme because I think he does some really interesting things with the theme in terms of variations of the melody, adding some uh, surprising harmony and also modern uh, sounds to the pretty basic jazz standard melody. And then I'm going to try to analyze two phrases from his solo. And I say try to analyze because he's surprisingly difficult to nail down exactly what he's doing in this solo. But it's very interesting and there are some interesting scale sounds happening on top of this pretty famous standard. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios, chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. This first example is in the theme, it's in the beginning of the theme even because it's the transition from the A part to the B part. And I think it's really nice to see how Ben Monner probably knows all the chords on the guitar, or at least most of them. And at the same time, he's not throwing chords in everywhere. He's also really thinking about what the mood of the song is. And in general, this song is really played kind of calm and introvert compared to how it's often played. And he's also leaving a lot of space. So here in the beginning with the melody, he's only playing the melody. And there's no harmony under it where you could put chords, even though it's of course possible. So he chooses not to and leave it open and have something to build from. Still no, no melody, uh, no harmony. In the fourth bar here on the E7, he adds a chord. He actually uses a volume pedal to, um, to fade it in. And we get a fairly vague chord because this is an E7 altered, uh, but it doesn't have a seventh and it doesn't have a third. So it's just the flat nine, the flat five, and then the root, that's also the melody. And then moving on to the A minor, we get these two notes, which is the melody, and then an 11 on the root. On the D7, there's no melody. And then here, sliding down to the A sharp, uh, which is then being kept. So he's changing the melody here because Normally you would of course resolve that back to the G when you get to the G major 7, but instead he's adding this chord which is like an F sharp triad over a G bass note and essentially that's like a diminished suspension, so it's like a C sharp diminished sound that then would resolve like a sharp 4 diminished back to the root. He keeps it there and then he resolves back to the B just before he moves to the bridge, so it almost becomes a suspension that stays and then immediately when it resolves it's already as if it's like a G7 going to the C minor that's the first chord of the bridge. The second example is from the B part. It's the 2-5-1 in G major that's halfway through the bridge. So we have A minor, G7 to G major. It's a great example of just adding some of the sort of classic modern sounds that you're gonna find. Some of the stuff he does here really has the Herbie Hancock and Bill Evans associations to me. We first have a pickup to the melody. He takes the melody up an octave at this point. So up to the high E on the A minor and then adding these two notes. So that's F sharp and G. So we kind of have an incomplete A minor 13 here. So that's kind of this sound. And then from there, on the D7, there's nothing happening really. He's just playing the melody. And then on the G major 7 that it resolves to, we first get this. There are two things to this. There are the sound that's being used here, which in the beginning is sort of a Lydian augmented sound. So a G major 7, sharp 5, sharp 11. And the first part is just the Lydian part, so that's really an F sharp minor triad. 
And then we have this counter movement where the melody moves up to a B, and the chord part is moving down to a B and a D sharp, so we get the sharp five in there. And then he goes from there into a Lydian sound, so that's just the E first, and then and really an A major triad. Resolving this, and then we get another E, and then it goes on to the next 2 5, which is a 2 5 in E major. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support. And it's because of them that I can keep on making all these very specific jazz guitar and music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. If you join us over on Patreon, I can also give you something in return for your support. In the solo, Ben Monder is really going for finding some sounds that are different from what we expect. Our ear has some sounds that we expect to hear, and then he's kind of messing with how he's choosing scales that don't sound like that. And in this case, the first example from the solo is on the B flat major 7, so again it's in the bridge. He's not really playing anything, if I remember correctly, on the C minor F7. And then on the B flat, he starts his solo line, but he chooses to play it really as sort of a very sort of distinct, strong Lydian sound. And in fact, he's really sort of playing like a B flat major 7 uh, flat 5. The way he does this is using upper structure triads. He actually starts with playing something that I would consider like playing a chord voicing as a as an arpeggio. And uh, it's kind of similar to what he does in the, in the theme with, with the F sharp over G. In this case, it's an A minor triad over a B flat. So that's the first thing he arpeggiates. So. And then moves up through still staying with the B7 flat 5 sound. And then some chromaticism that takes us to the C minor. Uh, with an e. oh. And then uh, from there, the C minor line, line is pretty straightforward, so that's really just reading note and then arpeggio. And then here we get one kind of strange note, which is, which is the E. And then up to the F sharp, or G flat, in fact. And the G flat is on the on the F7. And then the line here, this is a bit ambiguous. I'm somewhat ignoring the E, actually. What I hear here is really sort of an F7 diminished sound. It's not entirely clear if it's that. It could be a few other things as well, actually. And if you have another explanation, then just leave a comment. So they're going chromatically down to the to the D, and then down to the B, G flat, F, and then here via the D to the C sharp. And here I actually would suggest that that's on the next chord, so that's resolving to the B flat. Except of course, B flat major doesn't have a C sharp. That's the sharp nine. So the sound that we get here is more like an augmented scale. In this case, the augmented scale would be, uh, let's see, so that would be three triads, that would be like the G flat, D major, and B flat major. And then you get this sound, which is like a B flat major 7, sharp 5, sharp 9. And that's a little bit what I hear here. Of course, you can choose to hear this also all as leading notes. That's that's really up to you. To me, it's, it sounds that it really has that sound of uh, augmented scale. And then around beat four, he resolves this and just goes back to B flat major at the end of the phrase. And there, so the kind of sound that we get here is like C minor, and then we get sort of the. Well, actually, we should do that like this with a B minor triad over F, and then that's resolved to. sounding B flat major 7, sharp 5, sharp 9, and then resolved to a B flat major 7. But it 
isn't, of course, all weird scales and upper structure triads. Uh, after this phrase, so when he re finally resolves, so with this phrase on the B flat major seven, then he actually turns that into a motif and moves that around over the next two five, which is the two five in, in G major. That means that it turns into, and then, and then finally concludes that with, and actually returns to that motif one more time. So there's also a lot of lot happening in terms of just melodic development besides all the very dense examples that I'm going over in this lesson. That's really just because I find those really intriguing that I'm choosing those. But don't underestimate the fact that he's also a very skilled improviser when it comes to playing very melodic solos. This example I find extremely difficult to really nail in terms of analysis. Uh, is on the 251 in E major, and actually where it's starting is on the one chord. But I think the first part of the phrase that he's playing, so this part, which is just a scale one up to A as a triplet, uh, is really just still playing on the B7, and then he resolves on B2 to the B, so we get the, the E major 7 there, but then it goes immediately into this, which is sort of an, a G sharp or A flat major triad with a leading note, which is kind of spelling out like an E major 7, sharp 5. And this could again be augmented scale. Uh, but also with the A, you can consider the A to be a leading note. You can also say that actually what he's playing from there on is um, E harmonic major on top of the E major chord, because that gives you that sound as well. Then we get an F, and then uh, that I also don't really have a, a really fantastic explanation for, which is kind of nice actually to have some stuff where you can you can't really tell what's going on. Then a two five back, which is first some chromaticism, and then just a scale one, and then uh, he's actually re resolving to the sharp eleven on the G major when he's coming near out of the bridge. So we really get the and then moving up the scale and sustaining the major 7. Another guitar player that's really associated with surprising sounds in terms of modern scales and modern harmony is Alan Holdsworth. If you want to check out a video where I'm analyzing some phrases from one of his solos, then check out this video. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and it's the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this week. Thank you for watching and until next week.